Hi there folks, my name is Dan Bell. I am from Intigen and today's video will be discussing creating a custom project site template. We got questions from customers talking about creating a custom project site template and uh, making it the default for when they publish their projects all the time. And uh, customers might wanna customize them to uh, pre-populate them with documents. They might wanna create folders in their, their document library. They might wanna just change the branding, change the theme. There are all sorts of reasons why people might want to do things to the project sites. Uh, this, this particular video is gonna go through the steps to actually do that. Now the steps involved here, uh, first we're gonna review project site functionality in general. That'll take just a few minutes. Then we will actually customize the project site template and save it as a template. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and associate that template with an EPT and go ahead and test it. All right, let's go. So you can see I am on the homepage of my project online environment and the name of my instance here just for uh, covering it now is trainer now to get to my project sites I'm gonna go ahead and do so from project center two projects here you'll know uh, starting a business for Clothiers and I also have uh, widget development now uh, looking in the indicators column you note that I have uh, actually some items in both Project sites, looks like I have documents, I have an issue and a risk in the other, either one of them, right? I could click directly on the item to bring me right to the item within the library. However, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually go to the project site via within the project detail pages, right? Uh, detail pages here, I have a schedule PDP, I have a project details PDP. Underneath those, I have the project site link. If I click on that, I'll be brought directly to the project site. It's called widget development in this particular case. This is what the default project site template looks like. Okay, you have a project summary area here. It's gonna have a timeline that will show you important events here. Uh, for this to actually synchronize uh, with those important events, we do have to specify that it will sync with tasks within the enterprise project type. We have a get started on your site section. This can be removed pretty easily. You see the link right there. You can share, you can specify deadlines, add items to the site, change the style, change the brand. You can also, uh, there's a news feed right on the home page. Team members can go ahead and submit items here. There's a document library link right there. And of course, on the navigation, we have other content. OneNote Notebook, great product. If you don't use it, there's one on every project site. There's my document library. It looks like I already have a document in there, a uh, task list. This task list is automatically going to populate with the tasks on your project. Therefore, you don't have to worry about uh, adding tasks here. You're going to add them into your project. Uh, again, if you specify the sync process within your EPT, the tasks will automatically show up here. As they're uh, completed, a, meaning 100% complete, the tasks will get the strike through here as well to show they're completed. Calendar, just a, a pretty straightforward calendar. We can specify important events for the team to note. Projects brings us back to Project Center, project details to the details, uh, project drill down view of the project. And then we have uh, deliverables, risks and issues just more items that the project manager can use to keep track of the project. Risks is you know, something that has the potential to affect our project. Issue something that's currently affecting our project. Creating one, just click on new item. Just give it a name, right? Uh, you can go ahead and start typing in the first name of the individual you're going to assign. These, uh, some of the fields have values, pickless values already here, you can update these if you want. The thing that you will want to refrain from is actually changing the name or removing default fields because that will cause issues with your publishing process. And then of course we have uh, other information we can enter. When we're done, click save. There is my risk created, right? Go to the document library. There's my document. Uh, there's other functionality here. You can initiate creating new documents. Of course I can upload more documents here by clicking the upload link. Um, and now you can see other documents there. <clears throat> if I wanted to be alerted on uh, anything within this library, I could create an alert here. And there are, there are plenty of options here, right? So uh, the title of the alerts documents, this will alert me to anything happening within this library, not a specific document. However, I do have the option to specify a document level alert. Uh, all changes or uh, varying degrees of changes here. Semi alert when, again, anything or varying degrees of uh, changes by me or something by me. Uh, when do I wanna get the notification, right? So there are options. Click okay, it will save the alert. Uh, click on this ellipsis up here again. Note the other option is to manage. If I click on that and I can see the alerts that I do have, and this will be alerts across the whole project site, right? So I wanna have to go to different areas to, 
to uh, go ahead and manage those alerts. Check the checkbox, click delete alerts, and then they'll both go away. Uh, again, so, so that's basically you know where the alerts can be specified within the site. Uh, so there's quite a bit that you can do with the project sites. And that really is a, the intended overview of the functionality of the project site. And hopefully you get a, you know, a good overview of what they can do for you and the value they bring to the project manager. In the next lesson, we're going to talk about actually customizing that project site template and then saving it as a, a project site template. Talk to you soon. Hello again, folks. This is lesson two. And in lesson two, we are going to customize a project site template and then save it as a template to be utilized for all our project sites moving forward. First thing we need to do is actually create a project site from which to make our modifications. And, you know, there are a couple ways to do that. Uh, the way I like to do it is actually create a project site from a project publishing process. All right, let's go ahead then and create a project. I'm gonna create one from a blank project since it really doesn't matter what I have here. There we have project one. Let's go ahead and save it. I'm just gonna call it template. Click save. Uh, and then we'll immediately follow that up with a publish. There it is, the prompt to create my project site. And there's the publishing process. And uh, remember, you don't have to wait for the publish to finish. We can go ahead and check this right in. And I can click on Project Center link here. And there's my project. And what I'm going to do just just to ensure it's done is I'm going to go to the queue and check out the queue is the process done here. It looks like there's still some jobs processing. And it looks like they're done. Great. All right. Let's go ahead and make some modifications to the project site. I'm going to go to into the project site the same way I did before. And there it is. Modifications I want to do have to do with the project document repository. I'm going to create folders in here. This is going to be a DBTD. And I want to have folders represent each phase. Okay, so now we're going to create the build. The build is going to be number two. And the reason I'm putting the numbers is uh, for sorting purposes. Here's my test. And then finally, There's my deploy. Uh, the other thing I want to do is I want to actually pre-populate the design folder with some documents. So I'm going to click upload. And here are all the documents here, design doc, functional specification, project charter. Uh, actually, we're going to skip the charter. Uh, and we're going to put the solution requirements document and the test plan all within that library. There they are. There we go in uh, documents and then the 01 design folder. We've uploaded design doc, functional specifications, solution requirements document, and test plan. Excellent. That's exactly what we were looking for. Click back here. Again, I'll see my four folders. Nice. It's exactly what we're looking for. Perfect. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and just uh, take one more look here. Check out our site contents in this particular list. And there's our uh, issue list and risk list. One more slight modification we're going to make here is to the issue list. Go into the issue list. And I'm going to go into list settings, advanced settings. And then one of the items here is going to be status, active, postpone, closed. And uh, we're just going to put active. And they wanted to, uh, this customer, active on hold closed okay so very simple change to status click ok and uh, there are basically the changes that we wanted to do right so so very simple what we did we created folders in the document library and also within the design folder we put four documents in there and then of course in the issue list right and I'm again to get to the issue list I'm going to site contents here right find the issue list click here if I were to uh, click new, just to test the status field, there's on hold. Again, so what did I do? Uh, updated the status, changed postponed on hold. And those are the only changes that I made to my project site. All right, so I'm basically done with the changes that I wanted to make here. 
Next step, now we want to save this project site as a template. How do we do that? Well, we navigate site actions, site settings. Site actions is the gear in the top right. Site settings. And then there is under the site actions uh, section, save site as a template. Click that. And there it is. So we give this a name. And then I usually like to put a date there. And uh, just reason being, such that we understand when the template was created. What do we do here? Created document library folders populated what zero one design and then changed issue status postponed to on hold. Uh, remember what we did. We included some documents within that 01 design folder. Therefore, we want to include the content. Very important to remember this. Otherwise, the content is not going to be brought forward in our template. Uh, therefore, we're going to check that checkbox and then click OK. System's working on it, creating that template for us. It doesn't usually take very long at all. <clears throat> and when it is, we'll get a confirmation template operation completed successfully. Uh, if we would like to see, the template in the solution gallery, we can go ahead and click on the link in the solution gallery. And there's our template, project site template with the date specifying it's new. Last time it was actually modified, activated, and the amount of resources used. So there we go. Uh, we completed this lesson. We customized the project site template, and then we saved it as a template to be utilized in the following lesson. And uh, we'll catch you on the flip side. Welcome back to lesson three in creating a custom project site template. And now we're going to actually associate that template with an EPT and then test that that template is utilized and ensure that our changes came forward. All right, let's go ahead and get rolling. How do we associate that new template with our EPT? Right, follow these steps, uh, go to server settings. Under workflow and project detail pages, there is a option for enterprise project types. Let's go ahead and select that. We'll take note of what we have for EPTs. Right now, the only one we have for projects is called enterprise project. And if we look all the way over to the right, it is currently specified as the default. Therefore, this is the one that we actually want to make modifications to. Let's go ahead and click on enterprise project. And let's note a couple of changes or a couple of settings in here. First of all, site creation, uh, important setting. As uh, in your organization, would you want to automatically create sites every single time and, and make it mandatory, or would you want your uh, users to be able to choose whether or not a site's created? This is where that setting is right there. Uh, remember the other thing that I talked about as well. Would you want the tasks in the project to synchronize with the tasks in the list, in the project site? And would you want it to show up on that timeline view? Also, would you want user permissions to synchronize with the project site? Well, typically, typically you want those things to take place. Therefore, I'm going to go ahead and select both of those. Um, and then lastly, site template. This is where we're going to go ahead and locate our new project site template. There it is, project site template 2018-0503. And once we're done with that, we click Save. All right. That was step one. Step two is going to be ensuring that our new project site utilizes that template. Therefore, we're going to create another project. Let's go ahead and find project template. We're going to use the new product launch. We'll click create here. Not really concerned about any of the settings here. Just going to call it project launch. Product launch, that is. Go ahead and save it. Saves currently taking place. Remember, I don't have to wait for the save to be completed. Create the project, it's forcing me. Remember, that's the way I have it set. It's gonna call it product launch. Go ahead and click publish. There goes the publish. I'm gonna go back to project web app while the publish is taking place and I'm gonna bounce into manage queue jobs and there are the jobs processing. And just like to wait and make sure that they are completely finished before I start my testing. You can see the project site update right there. Definitely don't want to be doing anything with the project site until that's done. 
uh, because who knows what's going to happen. I might experience er er errors with the project site. Therefore, we'll just give that a moment for the changes to take place. So while that's doing that, I'm actually going to close out of the project, check it back in. There we go. And uh, there we go. Looks like it's done. Let's go to Project Center. There's my product launch. Hey, did you notice something different? We already have a document indicator in the indicators column for product launch. Hmm. Well, you probably know why that is, and that's because remember what we did in that zero one design folder, we pre-populated those documents in there, those templates. Let's click on project site. There it is. Okay, great. Let's click on documents. Oh, there are my folders. Exactly the way I wanted them. They sorted in the correct order. Uh, order. Let's click on zero one design and make sure that my documents are there and there you go. There are the documents that I wanted to be pre-populated in the library. Perfect. Other thing that we wanted to check, remember? We went ahead and updated the status of the issues. Let's click on issues here. Click on new item. And all I care about is the status. There you go. Remember what it was. It was postponed. Now it's on hold. There you go. So now the two changes that I, I implemented in that project site template have been confirmed to be successful. Creation of the folders, pre-population of documents within zero one design and the issues list, the updating of the status from postponed to on hold. Everything's been successful. This project site template's been updated exactly the way we want. Hopefully this has been very helpful to you. Uh, enjoyed having your company. Thanks very much. Have a great day.